God since it's still the octave that we probably should, should say in some song. Um, hold on a second. You can do, oh, sons and daughters, you all know this. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. O oh, sons and daughters, let us sing. The King of heaven, the glorious King, o'er death today rose triumphing. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, that Easter morn at break of day, the faithful women went their way to seek the tomb where Jesus lay. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Jesus Christ, and the communion of God's Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, as we celebrate Friday of the octave of Easter, mindful of our sinfulness, let us prepare ourselves for the Paschal Mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the firstborn of the dead. Lord, have mercy. You are the resurrection and the life. Christ, have mercy. You show us the face of the eternal Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive each one of us our sins, and bring us all one day to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. In the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who gave us the Paschal Mystery and the covenant you established for reconciling the human race, so dispose our minds, we pray, that what we celebrate by professing the faith we may express in deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After the crippled man had been cured, while Peter and John were still speaking to the people, the chief priests, the captain of the temple guard, and the Sadducees confronted them, disturbed that they were teaching the people and proclaiming Jesus proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They laid hands on Peter and John and put them in custody until the next day, since it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word came to believe, and the number grew to about 5,000. On the next day, the leaders, elders, and scribes were assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and and all who were of the priestly class. They brought them into their presence and questioned them, By what power or what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, answered them, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, In his name, this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no selfish salvation. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. 
the word of the Lord. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his mercy endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, or twin, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We also will go out with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it and were not able to, and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus, whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in on the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with a fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over, took the bread, and gave it to them. And in like manner, the fish... This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Today gives us another glimpse of how we can be a revived and renewed church. You notice it begins with Simon Peter and the other disciples. You know, they went through all the stress of the crucifixion, all the stress of the betrayal, and even the stress of, you know, having seen Jesus in the resurrection. And it's a stressful thing. So what does Peter do? He goes back to what he knows. I am going fishing. And so they go. And Peter and the rest of them, you know, were expert fishermen. So they go and they spend all night trying to do the same thing that they were doing trying to be a fisherman. And yet, they didn't catch anything. So what does that teach us? It teaches us that if we think that we know how to be people of prayer, if we think that we know how to be good Catholics, if we think that we know how to do this, and we keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, 
we will get to a point where it's not going to work. Because what Jesus does when he comes into our lives, and he comes into our lives often, is he changes us. He offers us new ways of doing things, new ways of being his disciples, new ways of being in relationship with him, new ways to be in relationship with the world, new ministries to embrace. And if we are willing to take the risk that Simon and the other ones did, and to throw our net out of the other side of the boat, to do something in a new way, it will bear fruit. And I think we have to really pay attention to that today because what happens when they throw the net over the other side of the boat is they catch 153 fish. The fruit of evangelization. 153 fish is a symbolic number of all the known species of fish in the world at that time. So the gospel writers tell us. And so that net is the church. Those 153 fish are you and me and the entire world. We are all caught in the net of God's love. We have to allow ourselves to be caught, to be pulled in, to be brought to Jesus. And Peter does that. And isn't that the role of you and I, the church, to bring people to Jesus? Not to bring people to come to church, but to bring people to Jesus. Because isn't that who the church is about? So we have to ask ourselves today, how are we going to do that? How are we going to bring other people to Jesus? I don't have an answer to that. I keep praying about it. This one of those things that's whole current time in the world has been doing for me about how do we do it in a way to bring people to the Lord? And what we realize is that when we do bring people to the Lord, that's what Jesus does. Come have breakfast. Come have a meal. Come eat at the table. Come to the Eucharist. So what it is, it's about being caught. It's about being doing our faith in a new way, in our own relationship with Jesus in a new way and going on to be fishermen, to do it differently, to throw the nets out where God tells us to. And then when we bring people and ourselves to the Eucharist, Jesus says to each of us, come, have something to eat. And that bread and that fish are symbolic of Christ himself. So my brothers and my sisters, on this Friday of the octave of Easter, let us be mindful of how we are going to be new in the church. How are we going to be a different disciples? How are we going to take a step back right now in all this free time that we have and really deepen our relationship with Christ so that we as church, the community of faith, can throw our nets out in a new way and allow us to be the conduits for Jesus so Jesus can bring people to the table. And he will work through us if we just listen. offer our needs and our prayers before God. We pray for the Holy Church, that it may continue to spread the net of God's love. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for government leaders throughout the world, that they'll put aside political differences and work for the common good at this time of crisis. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray again for the doctors, the surgeons, the nurses, all the, med all the medical professionals, the EMTs, funeral, uh, funeral directors, those who work in grocery stores, those in the supermarkets, all of those on the front lines, that God will keep them safe and that they will know the goodness of the ministry that they perform. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also for all those who are struggling because of loneliness, that God will be there for them. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That each of our parish communities, no matter where we're from, will be willing to throw our nets out in a new way and begin the new evangelization. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those who are mourning the loss of a loved one. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the sick. We pray especially for those with the coronavirus. Pray for all the sick members of our parish communities. We pray for all those who deal with addiction and mental health issues. We pray for all of those who are in the hospitals for any reason. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all emergency responders in a particular way today and offer this liturgy for their good. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. 
and pray for all the faithful departed, that they who knew Christ in this life will come to know him in the fullness and in the peace of the kingdom, and especially those members of our families that we offer, we pray for in silence. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, and for the prayers that lie within each of our hearts. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our Father, for all who have contracted coronavirus, we pray for care and healing. We pray for those who are particularly vulnerable, for their safety and protection, for all who are experiencing fear, anxiety, or depression, for their peace of mind and spirit, for affected families and who are facing difficult decisions between food on the table or public safety. We pray for policies that will recognize their plight, for those who do not have adequate health insurance, that no family will face financial burdens alone. For those who are afraid to access care due to, immig to immigration status, for the recognition of God's given dignity of all, for all of our brothers and sisters throughout the world, we pray for shared solidarity, for public officials and decision makers, for wisdom and guidance. O oh God our Father, during this time, may your church be a sign of hope, comfort, and love to all. Grant peace, grant comfort, grant healing. Be with us, Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread that we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine that we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. Perfect within us, O Lord, we pray, the solemn exchange brought about by these paschal offerings, that we may be drawn from earthly desires to a longing for the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the, and the heavenly powers with all the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the font of all holiness. And all creation rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, that that same Holy Spirit graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. And Father, again giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and we profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and his ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy, this living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. John the Evangelist, St. Mary of Magdala and the Holy Women, and with all the saints, and whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and Howard, our Bishop Emeritus, with the orders of bishops, priests, and deacons, with those in pastoral leadership, the religious, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all those who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For it is through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Born by divine teaching, and at the Savior's command, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and who reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> okay. A couple of things before we finish today. Um, I'm going to keep you sort of teaching a little bit about the Mass. The uh, prayer that says as the priest kisses the gospel or the deacons kisses the gospel is may the words of the Holy Gospel blot out our, my sins. And um, granted, it's not a people part, but it's uh, sort of like, you know, the, there's uh, the, the demand maybe, good word, for the priest to stay focused. And the realization of the role is not to be Lord of the liturgy, but is to be transformed, priest and people by the liturgy. So that kissing the words of the Holy Gospel of may the Lord blot out our sin, my sins. It's a reminder to me that you know, I'm a sinner just like everybody else and it's God who it calls us to conversion. So there will be um, evening prayer tonight at 6. Uh, Deacon Al is going to lead that. Um, Sunday Mass is at 10. That will be streamed from here and we are working on doing hopefully next week from down at St. John St. Joseph's. Um, just a little bit of 
coordination that needs to happen. But we think we're going to be able to do that. Um, I make guarantees and promises yet, but it looks promising. So um, I don't want people at St. John St. Joseph's because I'm connected to both. I don't want them to feel forgotten. Um, uh, it's just uh, things happen so quickly. The uh, most important thing is, you most, some of you know, or all of you know, that we have been able to provide some masks for people. They've been sewing, people have sewn them. Um, we ran out, and so uh, Maureen, thankfully, was able to make some more to her benefit. Um, you really need to thank her when you see her. But uh, we need more sewers, bottom line. Uh, so if you're looking for a ministry to do, and you know how to use a sewing machine, no idea how to use one. My mom was a seamstress. I can't sew anything. But if you are a sewer and you'd like to make some masks, we'll provide the material. Um, I went out to Walmart today and I got some. Um, slim pickings, but I got some. And um, But email Maureen, Maureen Biela at stmarynewyork.org. Go to the website on the bulletin. Let her know you're willing to sew, and she'll coordinate that with you. There are two people who are delivering. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm too. so it's really an important thing um, that we have people who can sew, so people who can make masks. There, go online, go on YouTube. There's all sorts of places to teach you how to make them. We have the material. I don't know what else you need, but um, if you can sew and if you're willing to make 20 masks, and if 10 people do it, it's 200. So um, it's a ministry. And I really want to encourage you to do that. So email Maureen, let her know you can sew. We'll figure out, I'll coordinate on this end if people have to get in to get the material and stuff. Um, other than that, uh, but, uh, so please, we've already made, poor Maureen spent a lot of time yesterday. And so really, you know, we can't just have one person doing that. When I know a lot of people can sew. So if you can do it, email Maureen. And I'm sure she's going to keep you busy. All right, and now that the governor says we have to wear masks uh, when we're out in public, then um, that's what we're all going to have to do. It is kind of weird going grocery shopping wearing a mask, but I guess we're all going to get used to it. There's a part of me that says that when we're able to have masks together in public, that we may all have to have masks on, um, which will make a very interesting liturgy. Um, but that's my sardonic sense of humor. So other than that, so masks on Sundays at 10. That'll be a live stream from here, and then. Hopefully next week we'll be down St. John St. Joseph's um, at 10. Um, we're going to keep Mass at 10 until whenever. So cause I think it will be a while, unfortunately, before we can have large gatherings. But we will do what we do to keep the country safe, to keep ourselves safe. Um, I hear a lot of people complaining that, you know, um, uh, you know, who are they doing this to? It's like, it's for the common good. You know, I would hate to get a community together and then have half of you get sick. So um, I'm relying on people who know more about medicine than I'll ever know. And, um, you know, there are people, I don't want anybody ending up in the hospital. Don't want to go there myself. So I'm saying that all to you so that we pray that, you know, we give us the gift of patience. I'm not a patient person, but if we get the gift of patience. So anyways, sewers, email Maureen. Sewers, email Maureen. We really could use some people. Um, my little plug. Anyways, the Lord be with you, and bow your heads for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Let the people say, Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Let the people say, Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner here on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Let the people say, Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Oh, and by the way, if you're not, if somebody is not tuning into the Facebook stuff and you know they're a sower, give them a phone call and tell them to get a hold of Maureen. I just thought of that one. So... Many hands, like many hands, will make light work. So, again, that's my plea. Have a good rest of the afternoon.